Good morning, and welcome to Monta Vista Unitarian Universalist Congregation. My name is Carissa Moore. I am the treasurer of your board of trustees, and here are today's announcements. The RE Council is meeting today at noon following the service. Tomorrow is Labor Day, and our office will be closed. Tracy may be in on Tuesday, and will probably be in on Thursday. Uh, Brenda will be on vacation until the 14th. So if you try to contact the office and there's a little bit of delay getting back to you, that's why. On Tuesday the 5th, we have Taco Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Wednesday the 6th, the worship committee is meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom. On Thursday the 7th, Choir rehearsal resumes. Yay! <laughs> if you are interested, please talk to our lovely Lily. And she will give you all the details on when rehearsal is and where to be. Next Sunday, we have a new adult RE class starting called Our Place in the Web of Life. And if you want more information on that, you will need to talk to Laura Mulroy. And then finally, save the date, September 30th, the Inland Valley Hope Partners 50th Annual Walk for the Hungry and Homeless. It's a 5K walk and run, and more details will be in this Thursday's Community Connections. So please check your emails. Upcoming services. Next Sunday the 10th is the in-gathering with the choir. So that promises to be a good one. September 17th, Cups will be doing a Maybon service. I did pronounce that correctly, right? Maybon. Okay, Maybon, okay. <laughs> and then September 24th, we will have a, the, the topic is change happens and new growth emerges with Reverend Maggie. And I will talk to you all later. And for now, I will turn it over to Reverend Maggie. Good morning, everybody. Boy, is it great to see all of you. And also, all of you that are joining us on Zoom, I'm sorry I can't see you, but we greet you anyway with our warm welcome. And as is our custom, we begin our service with the ringing of the bowl. We sound it once for those who came before. For the ancestors and the founding members of our congregation whose vision brings us here after 71 years. We ring it for the Tongva and other indigenous peoples who tended this land long ago and first called it home. We ring it for those of us here and now for all of us gathered here, both on site and online. For those who will be joining us online today, for our staff, for our visitors, our friends, our sustaining members, and our partnership congregation in the Philippines that was just texting me this morning. So we are very closely connected all those miles away, or all of whom support and grow and illumine our journey together. And we ring it once for those who will come, for all who will find safe belonging here among us and make MVUUC their spiritual home in the days just ahead. We chose a fun opening song for today. Some people call this our UU polka. I invite you to stand and let's all sing together with lots of energy. Number 361, enter, rejoice, and come in.
did. And I'd like to invite my husband, George, and my dog, Sophie. <laughs> They're kind of one. They're going to come and light the chalice for us today. I know, I tell you, don't play with fire. <laughs> our time together in worship is intimately connected with our daily lives. As a symbol of that connection, we light our chalice with a flame that represents our shared light of hope and witness. Let's hear now the words of Reverend Florence Caplo in her reading titled, Honoring Our Labors. In recognition of Labor Day, we light this flame to honor all work, including the work of our hands and our backs, and gratitude for all the labors that support our world, and for all those who boldly continue the work of justice, equity, and peace. Another one of our traditions that we have weekly is to read our covenant together. It's a covenant that's living and changing, but this is the one that we're reading at this time. And I invite you to stand and read it with me. We'll speak it aloud together, and then that'll be followed with singing Spirit of Life, first in English and then in Spanish. We affirm that love is the greatest purpose of this congregation. The search for truth is our constant star, and service is our prayer. We pledge our hearts, minds, and hands to challenge injustice with courage, to find hope in times of fear, and to live out our Unitarian Universalist values every day as beloved community. Thus do we covenant with each other and with all that is sacred in life. are in for a treat today. I always love it when I can get one of the congregants, one of the members, to come up and share their gifts with us. And this is a perfect fit for today that our member, Ben Williams, is here to talk about labor on Labor Day. So put on your seatbelt. We're going to have a great service today. But before the children go out to their classes, he has a little story just for them. Ben? Good morning, kids. So I looked for a bunch of stories, and I wasn't quite sure that any of them quite fit. So I'll tell you an old story with a little twist. This is the story of stone soup, which you may or may not have heard before. There once was a village, and in this village, they lived happily and they worked hard together every single day. But a terrible drought came, and it became difficult to find food. And as the drought went on and on, 
the mommies and the daddies began having a harder and harder time finding something to feed themselves and their children. So as the drought continued, people who used to share began to keep things in their homes and not share their food and then not invite friends over because the parents were afraid they might not have enough food in the days ahead. Well, as time went on and the drought continued, food became very tight and some people didn't have anything left at all. And at that time, an older woman, a wise woman in the village said, you know, we need to make a change or we're really gonna be in trouble. She took a great big cauldron, she took it out to the center of the village square, she lit a fire and she invited everyone to come. Everyone came and they said, what are you going to put in the pot? We have no food. She said, well, I will make stone soup. Everyone laughed. How can you make soup out of a stone? It made no sense. She said, well, first I put in a stone. And she took a large stone and she put it in the pot. Everybody looked. That's not going to make very good soup. She said, oh, I don't know. Sometimes you have to wait for the magic to happen. Maybe, maybe I can find something to add to the stone soup to just give it a little extra flavor. She went back to her house. She came back. She had one carrot. She said, this is all I have. I don't have anything else. But maybe it will make the soup taste a little better. Someone th thought, a small child, a little girl, she was about six years old. After a little while, she said, you know, I think I might have a little onion. It's not very big. The older woman said, hmm, I think that would make the soup taste really good. So the child ran back to her house and brought back the only onion that they had left. She put it in the pot. Her parents looked a little disturbed by the use of their last onion, but it did smell better. And then another person brought a potato. Someone brought three radishes. In the end, everyone brought all they had. And they made a great soup. It did not solve all their problems, but for that moment, the village came together. They were able to stretch what little they had to give everyone a decent meal. And they were able to remind each other the importance of being together. In the days ahead, there were still struggles. The drought remained. They now had no food at all, but they had something far more important. They had each other. So may it be. Thank you, Ben. That was great. Um, Riley, do you want to come up and get the chalice? And then we can sing all of the children out to their classes. Or Robert, too. <laughs> Now I'd like to introduce our treasurer, Carissa Moore, to come back up for fun time with the treasurer. <laughs> hello, hello again. Seems like it's been a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. So I was informed last month that some of y'all couldn't see this. Now this is, this is what we call our dashboard. This is, it's basically an overview of the four page budget documents I get from the treasure, get from the bookkeeper every month. So I've broken it down. Uh, Jarius, could you go to slide two please? There we go. Can we see this? Yes. Awesome, yay. <laughs> okay, so. For July, total revenue was $38,902. And 
Now, a lot of this was from June, like some of y'all that paid your pledges the very last minute um, because of Tracy's vacation schedule, they didn't get deposited till July. So this is where, this is where those numbers are. Total expenses, $27,789. Now, a lot of that was also because of Tracy's vacation schedule. Some things just didn't get paid till July. So, but we had a surplus for the month. So yay, yay for starting out the month with this, the fiscal year with a surplus. So, all right, uh, slide two, please. All right, so as you can see, Lots of, lots of pledges paid. Very nice plate. I'm very happy with these numbers, personally. <laughs> All right, slide three, please. Or slide four, please. Thank you. All right, so we are, we are looking pretty good at the moment, you know. I, I say at the moment because there's always something. Um, but we're looking pretty good, especially compared to last year. So let's hope this keeps up. <laughs> um, we do have upcoming expenses. Um, some of you may be able to feel the air conditioner. I'm not sure, entirely sure it's kicked on yet. Um, but we had to have the air conditioners worked on on, fr on Friday. Uh, one is working. One is currently not working. Um, he tried to fix it and it started up and made a horrible racket that made the building shake. So, so that's currently disconnected. <laughs> and there, there, there's one more thing he can try. If it works, great. If it does not work, we're gonna have to replace that air conditioner. Um, he did say that we can take the money we have put into parts for that air conditioner and put it towards a new one if we have to. So that helps. Uh, second thing, we have a backflow device that apparently keeps setting off our security alarm because it has somehow been vandalized. And so that is another expense. We have to get that fixed, otherwise, our security alarm is going to keep going off. <laughs> uh, let's see. We also have issues with the fire alarm for Montessori. Short story is we cannot find the paperwork from when Montessori moved in and they had their fire inspection. And so we have to upgrade the fire alarm for their section of the buildings to current standards. We are currently in the process of getting bids for that. And we will let you know more once we have those bids in place and a plan, basically, beyond getting the bids. Last upcoming expense, the roof. The roof needs to be replaced sooner rather than later. When I talked to the guy from Klaus on Friday when he was working on the air conditioners, he said there are literally gaping holes in our roof. And if you're one of those people that believes the farmer's almanac is correct, then we are supposed to be in for a cold and wet winter here in Southern California. So yeah, we, we need to get that done. We are getting bids for that now. Um, if any of you have a roofer that you have used, that you like, please let one of the board members know. Uh, we're all here today. <laughs> so it's like, you can talk to me, you can talk to David. We've got Debbie and Terry in the back. Any one of us can take that information for, from you. Um, also upcoming, we have been approved for a spirit level grant for $50,000. Yeah. So yay. But that d does mean we need to raise $25,000 for it, for the matching part portion. So you will get more information on that coming up this month. 
and hopefully that will all go smoothly. So, all right, thank you all. We always want our church to be a holy place, but not literally, not literally. And one of the ways that we as a congregation who upholds the Unitarian Universalist values is that we share and we care for those in our community. So this year, our uh, justice committee asked the board and the congregation voted to have a share of the plate for our offerings. So any offerings that are not dedicated to either your specific pledge or a specific um, fundraiser that we're doing, all of the undesignated offerings will be split 50-50 between our general fund and our share of the plate. And with a new month, we have a new Share the Plate um, organization. And this month, it's one of our favorites, the Inland Valley Hope Partners. And Maribel Dana is here, and she's going to talk a bit about them to us as we prepare for our offering. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Well, I am the person who takes this food from the basket and put it, it's in, put it in the, uh, puts it in the blue cart at the back of the church and once a week takes it over to the local Hope Partners uh, reception point for food called the Beta Center on Gary Avenue in Pomona. And but Hope Partners, as I've been learning lately, is so much more than just the Beta Center. Um, this is their July newsletter, <clears throat> and describing themselves, uh, they say that they are celebrating over 50 years of commitment, and they serve over 75,000 men, women, and children each year through a group called Our House Family Residential Center. And Rapid Rehousing is another section. Beta, which I mentioned, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, the Sova, Claremont, San Dimas, and South Pomona food pantries. They also run the, or sponsor the Pomona Farmers Markets throughout 13 communities in the Inland Valley and bordering um, Los Angeles County. And those communities are Chino, Chino Hills, Claremont, Diamond Bar, Laverne, Montclair, um, Mount Baldy, Ontario, Pomona, Rancho Cucamonga, San Dimas, Upland, and Walnut. The shelter houses five families for up to 90 days. The food pantries distribute five days worth of food per person to no or low income families. Clients can come once every 30 days. The farmer's market operates every Saturday morning and accepts uh, WIC and EBT cards. Begun in 1968 as the Pomona Council of Churches, Today, this nonprofit is a collaboration of faith communities, businesses, community groups, and individuals who really know and care about their neighbors. A um, couple more statistics here. Uh, it is hard to believe that in America, the wealthiest nation in the world, nearly 25% of our adults are food insecure. And at Inland Valley Hope Partner, Partners, they are serving an average of 3,500 men and women and children each month. So there is more. I invite you to go to their website and read more. And uh, 
That's what we will do, hopefully. They also add this, your gift of 20, 50, $100 or more will help us meet the food and nutrition needs of our community's children and families. And you can put a check or cash in the offering today. You can always bring the food, canned food, dried food, um, those kinds of things tend to work the best. So, oh, and I heard a, a sweet lady one time, oh, I wish you guys had dried fruit. More dried fruit. So, and they need volunteers at these uh, food uh, pantries. They always need volunteers. Thank you. Thanks, Maribel. We have them included in our Sunday service every week, and we rarely take the time to figure out exactly how many people they serve and how, you know, how wonderful they are to our community. No, that's fine. Sorry. But today's offering message is inspired by the words of Carolyn Mace, who says that an offering is gathered to unify our energies and weave our passions into a blanket of inspired mission. Working in community with like-minded people, we are each called to step in to make a difference with the gifts that each of us bring, each according to our generosity and, importantly, our ability. We are grateful to be here in this place where we belong, participating with our shared work of becoming and activating the change that is needed in personal lives and in our shared community with the world. It is with gratitude for all of the many gifts of each of our community that our offerings will now be given and received. Now we come to that moment in our service where I will briefly share with you an update from the picket line with WAG and SAG-AFTRA. So, as many of you may already know, on May 2nd, the Writers Guild of America went on strike, and on July 14th, the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists also went on strike. These separate strikes are occurring this very moment concurrently, and the workers' disputes are centered around pay. As you probably know, the funding model before the rise of streaming services included advertisement revenue where businesses paid distributors for ad slots, and then distributors would pay residuals to the artists every time their work was used to generate revenue. The past 20 years have seen the rise of streaming services, from podcasts, which we all enjoy, uh, to Amazon and Netflix. There have also been changes in computing technology, like chat GPT and digital image recreation, that have altered how visual and audio entertainment is created and delivered. These technological changes have resulted in profound disruptions to working life for actors and writers. Actors and writers are worried about receiving livable wages and fair pensions for their work. They are also concerned about how technology might eliminate or further disrupt their jobs. I was at dinner Friday evening with a member of SAG-AFTRA, and he shared with me his concerns about maintaining financial independence while doing valuable work. Clearly, this man's work is valuable to our community. We watch the shows he acts in, and by the time that we spend engaged with his art, we demonstrate through our lives that art's worth to us. Someone makes money off of his labor. Distribution and production companies are turning huge profits for their stakeholders. However, this person's work while valued by us, the community, and making money for many is not resulting in livable wages for him. In both strikes, anonymous studio executives have been reported in major news outlets as stating their intention to wait until workers begin facing foreclosure on their homes before taking negotiations seriously. Thus, they anticipate resuming serious labor negotiations in October. If you wish to support writers and actors on strike, you can Google the following phrase, 
SAG, AFTRA, Special Pickets, and you can find a list of locations being picketed in Los Angeles Monday through Friday. Thank you, Ben. We don't get that perspective in our day-to-day -day life or in the other news sources that we have. But um, what I love about our service is that sometimes we come here to get mad. <laughs> Not just to be inspired, but thank you for that information. And we'll share that, um, that place where you can go, the web, the link. We'll put it in our community connections for next week. One of the other ways that we act as a, a loving community is that we share the things in our lives that bring us joy and the things that are of concern for us. We call them delights and disappointments also. Um, we have these little forms for those of you that are new. We have these at the greeters table when you come in or over on the green table over there where we have announcements. Um, I have one today. It's from Debbie Skirdo and it's really adorable. <laughs> It's a joy. I'm so happy that my loyal companion, Irie, will celebrate his 18th birthday on Thursday. Animals make such special friends. Yeah, that is for sure. I don't know, we have any online? Uh, Jack, Jack Widener. Oh, we miss you here in the, in the sanctuary, Jack, but thanks for being with us online. Um, oh, no. He has COVID. Oh, welcome to California. Welcome back to school. Aw. Yeah. And then one from Donna. Uh, it says, I need a prayer for my friend Richard. Uh, visiting his daughter's place. Oh, ahead of fall. Meg Amato. Joy, I'm so happy to be a leader in our teachers union with Ben Williams. That is a joy. That's sweet. And I think that's it. Some of the other um, concerns in our lives, we could probably do a pop-up and have everyone offer something. It just seems like there's like this cumulative effect of difficult things going on in our world right now. But the one sad thing that we all share, and I think we just all need to say aw together, is um, the death of Jimmy Buffett. You know, even if we weren't a big fan of his, we certainly have to um, admire and honor the way that he brought so much joy to the world in so many different ways. So as we hold all of these things and those that remain unspoken, oh, I also would like to um, mention two people in the congregation that have given me their okay to mention um, their, their situations right now. One is for Bruce and Sally. They're, uh, I spoke with them this week. They're doing okay. Still looking for someone that would be an on-call caregiver. They don't need a day-to-day -day person, but they want to have someone they can trust to come in if there's an issue. So if anyone has ideas on that, please give them a call. And also, um, let's just be holding Catherine Rowley in our hearts and prayers and sending her all the loving energy that, that she can use and need right now as her sister um, is now in her, in Catherine's home and entering into hospice over the last day or two. So that's always a very difficult and very heavy time. So we love you, Catherine, and we send you our prayers, and we're here for you in all the ways you need. Let's have a time of prayer and meditation together. Let's just breathe or notice our breath. I don't think we should try to control it or synchronize everyone's breath, but let's just shift in our chairs and feel a little differently and just um, pay attention to how we are being breathed by the universe and by life, that spirit of life that we sang about. And as we come to this time for connection and comfort for ourselves and for those who are close to our hearts, and for all who labor, may all workers with rough, worn hands and aching backs feel relief. 
And we enter our time of meditation to catch a glimpse of equity. May all who labor just to survive, may they live to know justice. And we find our way to this sanctuary of love and to nourish our relationships and our sense of belonging. And may our bonds of solidarity be strengthened. Uh, for we are grateful for this congregation of wisdom, courage, friendship, and occasional anger. But may we proceed hand in hand toward liberty and justice for all. That ancient and ageless promise that we all hold so dear, no matter the many ways that it seems elusive, it remains our common cause the more we sense our world sliding off track and we grow weary with hard things, the more we need every person of faith and no faith to stand together and to hold the center in a place of love and resolve. For we are not a caravan of despair. And this is not a time to become one or to hang our heads so instead, let us raise our expectation of what we can do because we are united and we have the will and our core is the source of our passion and we know how to do hard things. We hold out our hands, our hearts to the broken ones and to anyone who will join in this labor of the soul, all whose feet walk upon our shared Mother Earth, all who will be laborers for peace and reconciliation and justice, because we know that all supremacy is harmful, because we know that faith is not a sign of difference, because we know that love is a clear call to our common cause. Amen. I have a special song for our gentle song today. It's a video. You will appreciate and hear the voice of our favorite UU, <laughs> Pete Seeger. I love that picture of Ellen with Pete together. Oh, that was a great picture. Um, Jarius will need a couple minutes to get that playing. So I'll just stand here and stall a little bit while he <laughs> gets it ready. There's something with the Zoom, because while our Zoom is open, we got to figure out this little glitch. If anyone knows a, a wise Zoom guru that can help us with it. For some reason, when, while we're Zooming, and we are right now, um, there's a delay. So when Jarius goes to play things, and here we are. See, it just took a second. Just enjoy. If you want to sing along, the words will be at the bottom, and you may. shall run. There can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? But the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Plowed the prairies, built the cities where they trade, dug the mines and built the workshops, endless miles of railroad laid. Now we stand outcast and starving mid the wonders we have made, but the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Have 
taken untold millions that they never toil to earn. But without our brain and muscle, not a single wheel can turn. We can break their haughty power, gain our freedom when we learn that the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. For the union makes us strong. In our hands is placed a power greater than their hoarded gold, greater than the might of atoms magnified a thousandfold. We can bring to birth a new world from the ashes of the old, for the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever, solidarity forever, solidarity forever, for the union makes us strong. Ruff. Yeah. <laughs> Today's reading is Bread and Roses, a poem by James Oppenheim that was first published in the American Magazine in December of 1911. You might recognize some of the lyrics to be from hymn number 109 in our hymnal, a song titled As We Come Marching, Marching. Bread and Roses is also the title of a song recorded by Judy Collins and also by Pat Humphreys of Emma's Revolution, with lyrics that originate from a speech given by American women's suffrage activist Helen Todd. Helen Todd was appealing for both fair wages and dignified conditions in the light of labor struggles and a striving for dignity and respect. Let's listen. As we go marching, marching in the beauty of the day, a million darkened kitchens, a thousand mill lofts, gray, are touched with all the radiance that a sudden sun discloses, for the people hear us singing, bread and roses, bread and roses. As we go marching, marching, we battle too for men, for they are women's children, and we mother them again. Our lives shall not be sweated from birth till life closes. Hearts starve as well as bodies. Give us bread, but give us roses. As we go marching, marching, unnumbered women dead, go crying through our singing their ancient call for bread. Small art and love and beauty, their drudging spirits new, Yes, it is bread we fight for, but we fight for roses, too. So as we go marching, marching, we bring the greater days. The rising of the women means the rising of the race. No more the drudge and idler, ten that toil where one reposes, but a sharing of life's glory. Bread and roses, bread and roses. For our lives shall not be sweated from birth until life closes. Hearts starve as well as bodies. Bread and roses, bread and roses.
Good afternoon, or morning. So we have four minutes left in the order of service. And I will try to be respectful of our time. So I had prepared a number of remarks, but I will limit it to a personal story. Um, I am a union leader in the eighth largest uh, teachers union in the state of California. I'm the vice president and uh, another member of this congregation for many years, Meg Amato, is the president. And we feel that our work lives out our union values and our UU values. It's nice when what you do in many aspects of your life is in harmony. There are two broad models for union work. One model is called uh, a service model, and another model is called an organizing model. In a service model, the union leaders um, provide a service to all of the members. You pay your dues, and then when you have a problem, you go to your union leader, and they fix it. That is a service model. In an organizing model, we all come together, we pay our union dues to accomplish joint activities, and each of us individually bears the responsibility to help make our goals reality. There are different views of what a union can mean, and changing people's hearts and minds from one perspective to another is important. An old model of uh, unionism, which involved a service model, was always uh, disheartening to members. With only two members in leadership, Meg and I, and 2,500 members, we will never be able to solve the 40 problems that come to us every single day. There will always be people who will be unhappy with uh, the service we provide. The service model is not sustainable. But if people have been engaged in the service model for many decades and it is their expectation that they take their problems to others and preserve that patriarchy and white supremacy and power structure, then it can be very difficult to change that viewpoint. But it's important work and it must be done. I'll share one story that happened last night, no, Friday evening, after I went out to dinner, I began making some phone calls to members uh, to try to catch up on my call log. And I spoke with uh, a kindergarten teacher. And she called me because um, her children did not have bathrooms available in their classrooms. And so if you have ever been around kinder kids, when they need to go to the restroom, they need to go right now. And there were not any restrooms in the classroom and there were no restrooms within the line of sight of her classroom. So for her kinder children to go to the restroom, they had to go down a hallway, around a building, and on the other side, it's a campus with 800 uh, human creatures on it. So that is not an acceptable thing. So I spoke with her about her concern and she wanted me to handle the issue, which I could have done. But uh, instead, I took the time to speak with her about her rights. We looked in the contract and found that the, uh, the principal was obligated in situations like this to hire an additional aide, uh, uh, someone who's not a teacher, to escort the children, to be ready all day long to escort the children to the bathroom. And so once we agreed that that's what the contract language meant, then the question was, what should be done about this situation? The educator was worried about retaliation, um, and there are many different forms of retaliation. Some are easy to prove, and some are not. Uh, her concerns are valid. If she stands up and, and confronts her administrator about this wrong, and she does so by herself, she will be retaliated against, and I will probably not be able to help her if her administrator has any sense because it's easy to hide wrongdoing, and it's easy to put down folks who stand up individually. So I encouraged her to speak with the other members of her kindergarten team at her site, to come together around this shared issue, maybe bring in the, the, the pre-K and the TK teachers as well, and have a conversation about whether they were willing to stand up 
for their working conditions because they are the learning conditions of their students. She reflected on that. It was a, a lengthy conversation. But this is the work required to change a union from a service model to an organizing model. If they stand up together, then their boss cannot, cannot treat them badly. You cannot punish an entire staff. There is one principal and 35 or 40 teachers. If they stand up together, no one can be punished. But if they stand up one at a time, it will never succeed. Solidarity forever. Our sending song today, and I'll invite you to stand for it, it's one that some of us might know really well. I know I can. It's an empowering song. Um, it might be one that we maybe need to learn. So we'll work our way through it. If you know it, sing it louder. <laughs> and I invite you to stand as we sing together, I know I can. It is number 1015, but the words will be on the screen. But if you like the music. words together that are on the screen and also in your order of service. We leave this gathered community, but not our connection or our sense of belonging. In this hour together, we have inspired our hearts, our faith, and our care for the world. So until we gather again, let's be strong, be well, and be kind. And let's continue our conversations on the patio with a cup of coffee after we hear Lily's postlude. <laughs>